Amen, amen, amen. Wonderful uh, hymn of the church, This Little Light of Mine. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning for the message from the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church right here in Auburn, Alabama. God bless you. I want to first uh, uh, speak to our membership. Thank you all for, uh, for uh, being and as faithful as you are being. I, I'm looking forward to the day that God will bring us back uh, on a full-time basis to in-person worship. But I thank you for those of you who have remained faithful. You have remained in prayer. You've remained faithful in your giving. You've remained faithful in your phone calls. I've received a number of calls from a number of our members, uh, just one this morning, that said, Pastor, I just wanted to tell you that I love you and that we're praying for you. So thank you for remaining faithful here at Mount Moriah, your Mount Moriah membership. If you are new to our, our church, if you're not familiar with us, we invite you to uh, go to our uh, Facebook page, we go to our website, and you can find out a whole lot more about the Mount Moriah Church family. Today is the first Sunday of October, and it is our, uh, our habit here on the first Sunday of each month to, first of all, we want to remind you that at the end of the message, we will be uh, observing the Lord's Supper together. So if you'd like to, uh, if you have already picked up uh, one of the uh, communion cups, we invite you to be with us. If you have not, of course, you can still participate with us. The Bible says that, uh, that Jesus shared the fruit of the vine uh, with his disciples. So if you have the fruit of the vine and if you have uh, some bread, we can all share together. Uh, so we want to stay tuned for that at the end of the message as we share the Lord's Supper together. Also, another tradition of ours is that we like to recognize on the first Sunday of every month those who are having birthdays and anniversaries. Now, I can't see you, but I'm just going to virtually congratulate you on your birthday. All of those who may be listening uh, right now, or if you, hear, even if you hear it on a recorded basis, if you have a birthday in the month of October, I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you have a birthday in the month of October, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. I can see you out there. Amen. Hey, I can see you also out there. Raising your hand for your birthday in October. God bless you. And may God give you many, many more healthy and vibrant years. Also, we'd like to recognize those who are having anniversaries uh, for this month. All of those who are having anniversaries. And my bride is, uh, that's, that's her you hear in the distance over there because uh, on next week it will be our uh, anniversary. We're having our, we're celebrating our wedding anniversary on next week also. So happy birthday and happy anniversary to all of you uh, who are experiencing a birthday or an anniversary during the month of October. Amen. I want to ask you also to stay in prayer. God is uh, speaking to me and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to be sensitive to, to God's will, but he's speaking to me and, and, and as to when that time will come that we're able to join together. Uh, we want to be sensitive to the power and the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We don't want to do anything rash, don't want to do anything out of God's will. But I need you, Mount Moriah especially, I need you to pray for me and pray with me as we seek God's will as to what he and where he wants to take us and when he wants to bring us back together again. Amen. Also, I want to remind you to stay in prayer for our uh, our membership, there are those who are experiencing illness and sickness. Uh, there are those who are dealing with one thing or the other. And we want to be sure that we keep them in prayer. Amen. Let's get ready to go before the Lord in prayer right now as we get ready just before the message. Father God, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you would uh, bless uh, as your people receive your word, that you would bless them, Lord. Your word is already blessed, O oh God, and we thank you that you've given us a word for your people. Now, Father, I ask that you would, would prepare the hearts and the minds, especially the spirits of those of us who will hear today, uh, that the word might fall on good ground, that the word might bring forth much fruit as you see fit. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. As far as those, we want to remind you to keep in prayer. My, my bride's uncle is uh, very ill. Uh, he is in the hospital right now, and the family is having to make a decision 
today, or at least very soon. Uh, he is on a respirator, and uh, sometimes the doctors just shake their head and say there's nothing else that they can do. But I know a man. Uh, I, I know a man who has healed the sick. I, I know a man who, who has raised even those who had already passed on. Yeah. And I know a man who's all-powerful. Uh, God's will will be done regardless of what I say or anyone else says. So I'm going to ask you to keep my wife's family in prayer along that line, especially her uncle or her uncle's wife and family. Also, I want to ask you to pray for Sister Charlene Griffin. She uh, texted me and let me know that her brother is headed now for a kidney transplant. Hallelujah to that. That is something that they've been waiting on for quite some time. And there are others. There are others also that I can, uh, of our membership, but I don't I want to call everybody's name, but but I'm just asking you to pray for pray for those in our membership and our church family. Amen. Go with me to the book of Joshua. For those of you who have been following along for the last several weeks, we have been preaching through uh, the book of Joshua. We're today in Joshua 21. Joshua 21. If you've been following along, you know that this is our eighth sermon in the series of the book of Joshua. Uh, Joshua is one of those books that uh, uh, that is uh, it has a lot of information uh, especially information that was particularly given to the children of Israel not necessarily for us but it was given to the children of Israel particularly about the allocation of land once Israel had gotten into the promised land well, let's go to the scriptures and I'll I'll catch us up on from where we've been uh, Joshua chapter 21 Let's begin reading at verse 43. Joshua 21, reading at verse 43. And I'll be reading from the New International Version today. If you're physically able, stand as the word of God is being read. Beginning at verse 43 from the New International Version. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their ancestors, and they took possession of it and settled there. Mm -hmm. 44. The Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their ancestors. Not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord gave all their enemies into their hands. And then verse 45, not one of the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I, I want to talk to you. There's there's something that I see in these three verses here. There, there's a point that I want to bring out in each verse. I want to talk to you just today about the plan, the power, and the promises of God. All right. The plan, the power, and the promises of God. We preached on last week from chapter 14, and we talked about Caleb, Joshua allocating to Caleb and his family, the land that God had, had promised to him some 40 years ago. Beginning uh, chapter 11 through the next several verses, up and really until the latter part of uh, verse, chapter 21, uh, I said on last week, Joshua is, is a little boring. Uh, because in those chapters, uh, Joshua goes into great detail, and the writer goes into great detail explaining the allocation and the division of the plots of land to each tribe of Israel. And God goes into, de into detail, great detail about that. So I have, I have skipped over those because that, that message was for Israel and Israel only. Now we dipped into chapter 14 and we talked about Caleb getting his part of land, but then from chapter 14 on to where we are today, into chapter 21, it talks about, as I said, how the land was divided, how the land was allocated. There were no great battles that were fought. The last miracle that was done in Joshua was in chapter 10, when the sun stood still. There are no great miracles. There are no great, uh, uh, great battles that are fought. Now, most of the wars, by the time we get to the text today, have already been fought. Uh, Joshua has, has conquered many, many cities, many kings. The Bible tells us that he conquered over 31 kings. Now, by the time we get to chapter 21, Israel has been in Canaan for seven years. The battle has been going on for seven years. The battle is winding down now. 
There are a few skirmishes that will still we can read about, but for the most part, 90% of the land of Israel, 90% of it, or maybe even a little bit more, has been conquered. There are some still in the mountains, the Anakin, the giants are still in the mountain. Caleb is going to handle them. But there are just a few minor battles that are left. Israel has possessed the land. All right. they, they, they're in the land of Canaan. And, 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 and what I see here, first of all, is the plan that God had. Right. You go back to Genesis chapter 12. God had a plan from the very beginning. He had a plan when he spoke to Abram. In, uh, in Genesis chapter 12, he had a plan when he told Abram, he says that I'm going to make a great nation out of you. He said, we're going to make uh, your, your, your uh, descendants will be like the stars of the sky, Amen. like the pe pebbles on the beach of a uh, sand beach. God told Abraham that the land of Canaan will be for your descendants. Amen. So from the very beginning, God had a plan for his people his children, the people of Israel, to settle in Canaan. God knows the end from the beginning. God knew that they would have to fight many battles after they got into the land, but God had a plan from the very, very beginning. God was faithful. And that's a message I want to give to you today. God has a plan for your life. We're not just living haphazardly. We're not just living day to day with no real purpose. God has a purpose. God has a plan. God has an objective for your life. Israel, we see, had been in Canaan for seven years. I think that number seven, I don't think it's by coincidence Amen. that the, we're talking about seven. We know that the, the number seven represents wholeness. It represents completeness. It represents the fact that God had given this land to Canaan, uh, in Canaan rather, to the Israelites. But the main point that I want to bring forth is that God had it planned from the very beginning. He kept his covenant with them. God is a, uh, is a God that keeps his word. God is a God that once he has laid down the law, once he has laid down his word, that his word cannot be, will not be changed. You know, Isaiah tells us that God himself said that as the, as, as the rain comes down from heaven and, and waters the earth, so will my word come down and it will not return unto me void. God had spoken to Israel God had spoken all the way back hundreds of years earlier to Abraham and said that the land is yours. But my point, brothers and sisters, number one, is that God, from the very, very beginning, had a plan for Israel. God knew the struggles that they would have to deal with. God knew the, the enemies that they would have to struggle against. God knows the struggles that you're going through right now. Amen. God knows the enemies that you'll have to deal with right now. God knows that there's sometimes you don't know the wrong from the right. There's sometimes that obviously we can't see the future. We don't know the, the end from the beginning. But God only asks us to continue to be faithful with, in, in him. Amen. Because as our God is a God that is faithful. And he expects us, wants us, needs us to be faithful. So first of all, I see the plan. It says, it says in verse 43, so the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to their ancestors, and they took possession of it. Been a long time coming. Forty years in the wilderness, seven years in Canaan, right. before they could say they had possessed the land. But I want you to know something. The old folk used to say that God don't always come when you want him to, but he comes right on time. Amen. I would have wanted it to happen a whole lot sooner had I been Joshua or had I been some of the people in the, in the, in the children of Israel there. But God's plan will come forth. All you got to do is wait on him. That's right. But in addition to I see seeing the plan of God, in this verse, verse 44, I see the power of God. Listen to what the word says. The Lord gave them rest on every side. Remember I told you that most of the battles had been fought. Victory had already been won. There were a few more that would be fought, but, but nothing major, nothing whatsoever. In my, uh, that, that, but God is showing his power. Listen to what the word says. The Lord gave them rest on every side. Now, I want you to know something, my brothers and sisters. God is still a God that wants his people to have rest. But rest does not mean the absence of struggle. To say that God gave them rest, it doesn't mean that the struggle was completely over because, as I've said for the third time, there were still battles to be fought. But the victory was theirs ahead of time. God had a plan, 
and God showed his power. Listen to what it says. Not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord gave all their enemies into their hands. That same message is for us today. We have an enemy that is working constantly against us. But I want you to know that it matters not how it seems that the enemy will sometimes overcome us. It matters not how, how bad it seems that we may, may be struggling against the enemy. God says that the enemy will not overcome us. I'm going to read it again. The Lord gave them rest on every side. They could rest because not that there weren't any other problems, but they could rest because they knew that God had them taken care of. I'm reminded of Jesus and his disciples. Uh, the time that he had told them, to, let's get in the boat to go to the other side of uh, the Sea of Galilee. And while they were out on the sea, you know the story, the Bible says that Jesus was asleep in the hinder part of the boat. Amen. And the storm raised up so heavily, so fiercely, that the disciples thought that they were going to die. Now, these were experienced fishermen. They'd been on this lake many, many times. But I want you to know that even in the middle of their struggle, Jesus was there. Amen. I want you to know this and remember this. The fact that you may be struggling, it does not mean that Jesus is not in the plan. Come on. It does not mean that Jesus is not in the boat with you. It does not mean that Jesus doesn't see you as you struggle. What it means is he wants us to realize that even though we are struggling, he is still with us in power. Come on. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless his holy name. Whatever it is you may be going through, whatever it is you might go through later in life, because I want you to know there are going to be some problems. Amen. All you got to do is keep on breathing. You're going to find problems. Problems will knock on your door. Walk right in uninvited. Sit down on the couch. And put the leg, put his feet up on the on the couch. That's right. But I want you to know something. Jesus is telling us now, just like God was telling Joshua and the people of Israel, you can count on my power. The Bible tells us that through up to this point in Joshua, uh -huh. they've seen the power of God. Uh, they saw the stun stood still in chapter ten, so that Joshua could com could complete the battle. They saw the dry Jordan River. Uh, dry up and Israel walked across on dry land. They saw the walls of Jericho come down uh, only with the shout of God's people. That's right. they, they had been demonstrated God's power. But I want you to think back in your own life. If you look at some of the things that you've gone through in your own life and where God brought you from to where you are right now, you can see God's power at work. Amen. First of all, I see God's plan. God had a plan for Israel from the very, very beginning. God has a plan for you. But second of all, I see a demonstration of God's power. Mm -hmm. Because the word says in verse 44 that none of their enemies were able to stand before them. Amen. Same thing applies to us, Mount Moriah, and whoever else may be listening. Your enemies will not be able to stand against you. If you will be faithful to God, God will be faithful to you. And the word says that he'll make our enemies our footstool. Amen. Israel had been through a whole lot of things. The 40 years in the wilderness, the seven years so far in Canaan, mm -hmm. and they were just seeing God's plan come to fruition. God may not come on the schedule that we have, That's right. but I want, you, I want to encourage you today. Stay faithful. Stay prayed up. Continue to follow God's word. Continue to do the things that you know that God would be happy and, and, and pleased with in your own life. So, so first of all, I see God's plan working. That's right. Second of all, I see God's power demonstrated. And finally, I see the promises of God. Mm. Look at verse 45. Not one, listen to this, verse 45, NIV version. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Mm. Not, one. Not one. I did some study as I was preparing this message. In the word of God, there are over 7,000 promises that God made to his people. From the New Testament to the Old Testament, there are more than 7,000. As a matter of fact, I'll give you an exact number. 7,487 promises that God made to his people from Genesis to Revelation. God has promised us great things. 
uh, Second Timothy, Second Peter rather says this, God has given us exceedingly great promises and precious promises. God has given us his word. He has given us his word from Genesis to Revelation. And I want you to know that God is good for his word. Yeah. Yeah. The word says that everyone was fulfilled. Look at the last part of verse 45. Every promise that God gave Israel, everyone was fulfilled. And I want you to know something, too, that God's promises will be fulfilled, not on our timetable. God's promises will be fulfilled on his timetable. We, we may want it to come right now. We may need or want relief right now. Yeah. We, we may need direction and, and, and help right now. But God's promises will be fulfilled on his timetable. I'm sure that Israel would have loved to have crossed the Jordan River and right after they defeated Jericho, go ahead and complete uh, the conquering of the land of Canaan. But here it is seven years later, and they're finally getting to the point that God's promises are being seen. God's word is true. Some of them took years. Some of the promises that God gave Israel took years to come true. But God fulfills a, fulfilled his promises to Israel. But not only did God fulfill his promises to Israel, God is fulfilling his promises to us now. Amen. You woke up this morning. That was a blessing from God. God has promised to care for us. He's promised to take care of us. I want you to know something as I get as I want as I get to the end of uh, close to the end of our series on Joshua that God has been good to the people of Israel, but not only was God good to the people of Israel, God's been good to us too. Amen. Not only did God make promises to Israel, God has made us promises also. Not only did God make Abraham a promise, Moses a promise, Joshua a promise, he made us a promise also. In the word of God, I like to go to the word of God when I'm, when I'm struggling with things uh -huh. and see what God had to say about it. Uh -huh. Sometimes I feel like I'm tired and I just can't hardly go any further. But I go to Matthew chapter 11 and I, I read one of God's promises. Jesus himself said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, uh -huh. and I will give you rest. That's, right. That's a promise, my brothers and sisters. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest to your soul. That's a promise, my brothers and sisters. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's a promise. Just like God promised Israel, God is promising us today. Sometimes I think I'm in a situation that it's impossible to overcome. Sometimes I feel like there's a situation that's pressing me so difficult against the wall of the world, against all, right. all the things that are going against me. But then I go to the word of God and I find what he said in Mark chapter 10 when he was looking at someone who they thought couldn't be healed. Jesus himself said, with man, this is impossible. Yeah. But with God, with God, Amen. all things are possible. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like I don't know if you've ever been there, but it seems like you've got problems mounting on every side. It seems like everywhere you turn, there's an issue that you've got to deal with. There's a problem that you've got to st a struggle with. And it feels like there may not be any peace in your life. Well, John 16 tells me that these things I've spoken unto you, that in me you should have peace. Mm -hmm. In this world you should have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have already overcome the world. Whatever it is you may be dealing with, my brothers and my sisters, the Bible says that Jesus was tempted in every way That's just right. as we are. That's and I want you to know that he is still a God that wants to bring peace into your life. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter how I'm struggling. Sometimes I just don't feel very spiritual. Sometimes I feel far from God. Have you ever been there? But God has given me a promise for that. Because he says when I can't feel like I can't make it, when it feels like I've done all that I can do, he tells me to seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all of these things will be added unto me. That's a promise, my brothers and that's sisters. That's right, that's right. But we have the plan of God. We have the power of God. And now the promises of God. Come on. God spoke to, through Jeremiah. Uh, when you sometimes it feels like you just don't know what to do. God says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad God's got a plan for your life? 
He said, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's a promise, my friends. You can depend on God's word. You can depend on God's promises. Second Peter says he's given us great and precious promises. We need to learn to depend on the promises of God. Sometimes it feels like the enemies. Those who are laying and stumbling blocks in your face. Uh, sometimes those you are struggling with. It feels like we are facing defeat. It feels like we just can't go any further. Well, Romans 8.37 tells me this. He said, all of these things, through all of these things, we are more than conquerors. More. Hallelujah, more, more than conquerors. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Whatever it is you're dealing with, my friends, God has a plan. God has his power invested, and God's got a promise for you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Yeah. He said, in all these things, I'm more than conquerors through him who loved us. And, and, and when I'm facing defeat, God says that with me. Yeah. Hallelujah. You are a victor. Isaiah said it this way. I love when Isaiah, when he was talking in the spirit, in the 40th chapter of his book, when it feels like it's time to give up. He says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. That's a promise, my friend. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church. God has a plan for our community. God has a plan. And God's power is invested here. God shows us his power and has shown us his, his power many, many times over. And God has given us a promise. I'll be with you. That's a promise. I'll protect you. That's a promise. I'll be your strength, he said. That's a promise. I will answer you, he said. That's a promise. I will provide for you. That's a promise. I will give you peace. That's a promise. I will always love you. That is a promise. Amen. You can depend on God's plan. You can depend on God's power. And you can depend on God's promise. And finally, God gave us one more promise that I'll remind you of. He promised us that he would give us an opportunity to eternal life. He promised us that if we would accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, mm -hmm. that we would, if we would submit ourselves to him and let him become Lord of our lives, mm -hmm. that he would give us eternal life. Amen. The word says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Oh. God has given us a promise in Jesus Christ. But now, Jesus didn't just appear on the scene one day. God allowed him to be born of a virgin in a town called Bethlehem. He allowed her to go through the birth pains so that the, the woman could experience the pain of bringing our Lord into this world. All right. And that Jesus could have had the experience of a human being growing up. But we know that 30 years later, he went out on the trail preaching and teaching the kingdom of God. But we also realize that three years later, he wound up on an old rugged cross. God had the plan from the very beginning because the book of Revelation tells me that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. That means that in the mind of God, Jesus was dying on Calvary before he was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Hallelujah to the lamb. God had a plan for us. He sent Jesus. He said, Jesus, not as a wimp. He wasn't a small man. I believe that he was a strong man, Amen. physically and spiritually. And the reason I believe that is that it took a real man to take the beating that he took the night that he was arrested. That's right. I believe that he was a strong man, a powerful man, mm -hmm. spiritually and physically, because he hung on that old rugged cross until the time for him to die. The Bible tells me that he dropped his head in the lock of his shoulder mm -hmm. and he said that it is finished. Mm -hmm. So the plan was for Jesus all along 
to come and display the power of God. That's right. And finally, we've got the promise that Jesus himself gave us. I'll be with you to the very end. That's right. Don't worry. Don't despair. I'll be with you to the very end. Mm. Jesus died and was buried, and he rose again that third day morning. Mm. And he said, I've got all power in my hands. That's right. That is a promise. I want you to know today, as I get ready to leave you, that God, in Israel's case, in the 21st chapter of Joshua, verses 43 through 45, he demonstrated his plan. He demonstrated his power. And he gave us promises. Yes. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless his holy name. God is still listening. As he heard the cries of his people Israel, he hears the cries of his people today. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The plan, the power, and the promises of God are still in force today. You may not know where God's taking you, but God has a plan for where you go. Hallelujah to God. There may be someone today that does not know Jesus as their personal Savior. If you've not accepted him as your Savior, Savior I encourage you to confess before him that, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I need you as my Savior. Confess your sins, and the Bible says that he's faithful and just to forgive us for our sins. Repent of your sins. Ask for God's help and his strength, and he'll bring it about. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. That's our goal when we preach, to hopefully tell somebody who does not know that Jesus loves them and that he died for them. And if you have accepted Jesus, but at some point you may have drifted away. He's like the father of the story of the prodigal. He's standing, looking down the road, waiting for his wayward child to come home. Amen. He's ready to accept you back into the household. God has a plan. He demonstrates his power, and he keeps his promises. Bless his holy name. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, now you... You, I've done what you asked me to do to the best of my ability. I just ask your Holy Spirit to handle the rest. It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. We want to take a moment and share together in the Lord's Supper. If you are prepared to share with us, Prepare now. Bless his holy name. Bless the name of the Lord. The Bible teaches us that the night before he was arrested, that he met for the final time with his disciples in what the scriptures say was a, an upper room. He told them that this would be the last time that he would make with them in this way. They didn't understand. The Bible says that he admonished them, gave them an ordinance. He said, this do in remembrance of me. As often as you do, do so in remembrance of me. In that upper room, the word says he took bread and he blessed it, he passed it around. He, he said, this represents my body, which is broken for you. Each year I love you.
In the same way, he took the cup with the fruit of the vine. He said that this cup represents my body, which is broken for you. Drink ye all of it. My blood, which is shed for you. Drink ye all of it. Amen. The word says that after supper, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus went to a garden, which is called Gethsemane. We don't have a Mount of Olives in Auburn or Opelika, Alabama, or even Lee County for that, for that matter. We don't have a Mount of Olives anywhere in this state for that matter. But there's a mountain of people that don't know Jesus. There are a mountain of people who need an encouraging word. There are a mountain of people who need to know that God has a plan for your life. That he is ready and able to demonstrate his power in your life. And that he will certainly keep his promises. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer. Until we meet again.